2021. Okay, so the top of that blade is flattened diamond. Has a kind of fuller, and there's the three fullers, and then a, uh, whoa, a Viking-esque style hilt. <laughs> so, yeah, that's definitely a Frankensword. Part Viking, part later century. But it looks kind of cool, and even though the fuller's too small in the middle, it does have a fuller down the middle. So, yeah, we'll take a look at that one. We have the Viking-esque style hilt. And this is a solid piece. It's not two parts and riveted together like traditional. And this ribbed handle here was originally about an inch longer. But as you can see, I still have a bit too much room for a Viking-style hilt normally. It was an inch longer than that. But I don't know what this handles off of. This guard is kind of generic. I think they've used it on a few swords. In fact... It's on my other sword also. <laughs> so, at least those two. And then this guard. Now, originally, when I had to cut it down, I had to, obviously, get the end work in there. So, I, I don't remember if I pinned that in here or not, or just tightened it, glued it, and filed it, maybe. But it is now solid. It used to twist some, obviously. And being that it didn't have a uh, nut up there to tighten, it was just the pommel that tightened uh, it would tighten, and if it got loose, you twist it, it would be out of alignment very bad. So, I did go ahead and glue that, because that made sense. But, as far as it, it is a very, very long blade. Um, now, Viking swords, you know, they tend to, Viking arrow swords, tend to average out around 30-ish inches, I think, on average. The one I have is, the hilt is supposed to be, from what I understand, based on an actual find. I don't know if the blade is, but the blade on mine is 33 inches. It weighs, I think, a little over three pounds. I don't remember the weight on it. And its balance point is like six and a half inches, which is, the balance point is fairly average for Viking swords, according to her strict website. And the weight is within historical needs. The blade is within historical length. It's just, it's on the high average of things, you know. And it is hefty in the hand. Which leads me to believe that lighter weight Viking swords might have been used differently than heavier Viking swords. Because it was obviously a preference if you liked a heavier sword or not. I think heavier swords were probably kept more in a hammer grip and sliced with. Whereas lighter blades might have been cast out like uh, Thrand used to do and such. Because my sword, I tried casting it and I feel like it's going to fly out of my hand. It's just got too much torque. Uh, partly due to its length of its blade. It's not so much the weight. But that's my theory. That maybe they were just used differently. Let's face it. Different people, even in the same time period, did use different swords slightly differently. Look at rapier manuals, for example. Well, this blade, I named this sword Langenberm, long worm, or long dragon, if you want to translate it that way. It is, ta -dum, bum, 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 36 inches. Yes. I don't think, I think I've read that there was one Viking sword found that was 40 inches. That's freaking huge. But by and large, this would be slightly above by a few inches. <laughs> Most Viking sword links. It doesn't look that bad proportionally, but it is long. Now, it is, of course, windless. It has a Ricasso here, which would not be on Viking swords at all. But a Ricasso there to show you how thick it is. But there's really not any distal taper on it, as many other blades are. You know, but it goes to a flat diamond, but does have that small Ricasso. So it doesn't, at a glance, it's not, you know, as far off as it could be in terms of looks. Definitely has room for the, the handshake grip of the back further, as some people like to do with Viking swords, or choke up. That has a little bit of a ledge there where your thumb kind of grips in, you know, whatever you want to do with it. Um, it has a pretty far out balance point. I think probably further than some of the others. Yeah, by about an inch, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, well, it's kind of actually, yeah, it's a little further than most of the other swords, but still out there. So it is. A bit of a beast in the hand. It is definitely feels like a crowbar. But it is not so bad that you wouldn't be able to swing it at all. Now, especially if you had a shield, you wouldn't have to worry about swinging it as often. So maybe. But I bought it because it was a Viking-esque hilt. And I kind of just liked it for a beat-around, fun backyard cutter. Because when you're cutting, you only have to swing it once, usually. You don't have to swing it more. So weight is not as much of a concern. So... There you go. Langan. And the sword and its little brother that started this whole thing. Top one is the town sword, riding sword. And the bottom one is a Franken sword. But there's more to this family than meets the eye. Yes. You see, originally I bought the top one. 
and one liked the bottom one to go with it. But then I got home and realized the pommels were not the same on those two. The next year I corrected that because they still had this one and now the pommels, mo the pommels match. So what did I do with the one that wasn't? Well, one of my friends, she jokingly complained to me that I did not have a girly sword amongst all my masculine swords. So I took the other one that didn't match and turned it into bum, 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 bum. girl sword. <laughs> Pink and white nail polish. What a thing. But that's why I said the pommels don't match this one's more fluid. But there she is, all in her glory. I did an Easter Bunny video with her. I've done a couple videos with him. Let's take a look further at him. Okay, so next, moving on, we have Boy Sword and Man Sword. As I'm this is Boy Sword. Boy Sword <laughs> is the sister of <gasps> Girl Sword. Not as many, it's, it's surprising to me, though. I did this kind of as a joke. So Girl Sword was kind of started as a joke because my friend said I did not have a girly sword. And pink stalks me as a color. Like, if I go to a store and there's something I want, if I have the money, they'll only have pink. If I don't have the money and come back, they usually only have pink. I've had this happen with a uh, pen I bought, a special pen I bought. I was in Florida one year with my family and at the beach, and I needed a pair of flip-flops because I forgot to bring mine. Went to their dollar store. They had an entire aisle of flip-flops, and the only pair they had in my size was a hot pink with a big flower on the toe. And I was like, mm, of course, it's pink. I don't care. I'm not one of these guys like, oh, that's girly shit. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I like the pink. It's a cool color. You know? In olden days, pink was often associated with boys because it was seen as a lesser version of red, and red was masculine. So I've been a big flip-flop back. That's why Alice wore blue, because blue was the girly color. But what this is, is a cabbage cutter blade. I think the American style, I think the French style was more of a flattened oval. It didn't have the fillers. So I painted those in with... Uh, nail polish and you can see in a few spots there where the paint has chipped you can see the brass underneath big thick brass if you like if you have brass for a guard it better be thick because thin brass does not hold up well it's pretty pretty malleable metal this more fluted scent stopper than the other swords have but if you know anything about cabbage cutters they are hefty they are rather thick blades and the point of balance is closer yeah, much closer but it's still it is like you pick it up, it's surprisingly heavy. It's kind of like a kukri where they're thick spine. You know, they have that heft because they're a tool. Well, cabbage cutters were issued to like artillery, I think, back in the day. And they're very short. Now, you imagine going up against a saber with this. You're at a great disadvantage size-wise. They probably didn't do that a whole lot. They're artillery. You know, people are going to protect them, and they have big guns, you know. So, I guess they weren't expected to fight very often. But, oh, I don't have a scabbard for it. That's why I can't find it. But... As such, they often got used as tools. Now, is this the best machete? No, I think a single edge probably would have been better for them of some sort because you can't choke up or too much as easy. But regardless, these were probably used more to chop wood and vegetables and animals for butchering than they were people ever. So I mean, I've seen some of these blades, I think, mounted on different style hilts by Confederates and made into Confederate knives. But generally speaking, it's a pretty hefty little short sword. But Or maybe big dagger. No, it's a demi sword. There's my term. But, you know, it's not, not horrible as a weapon, I personally feel. But, like I said, they're not. Like, if you were traveling, this would be a nice size for, like, getting out of a car or coach or something. But it's not, like, you know, not like some weapons of this size where it would be light. Like, I've seen some left-handed daggers that are this length, and they are much lighter. So here is Boy Sword. And Boy Sword has a much, well, it's much longer. I think he has a longer grip. Don't hit. Okay. Yeah. Nah, I guess about the same. Pommel sticks out a little further because that cap. But Boy Sword's blade is also a cabbage cutter, but this time on Glamour Belt. Okay, nah. Got the little twisty handle with the oh, I can't see something right here. With the uh threads. You can see this handle looks scuffed and it is intentionally scuffed because it was very like slick leather, so I roughed up some sandpaper to get a little bit better grip so it would slip when wet. It has these little slight curves. You see these sometimes on cheap Viking swords, the style of brass guard, but at that thickness, I might trust brass. I generally don't trust brass because it's not that great, but at that thickness, I might. At the length, maybe not. That's a little short if you're trying to parry, but whatever. So there you go. Now, I bought boy sword. Well, I bought girl sword originally as boy sword, and realized the pommels didn't match, and then I went back the next year and bought it as I signed it. This is Man Sword. Now, Man Sword actually, ironically, perhaps, handle is noticeably shorter than Boy Sword. 
not sure what that's about, but I can't switch them because the tang length doesn't work out because of where the shoulders of the tang are and stuff. But it has a different blade that is a bit longer. Now, I'm not going to room to shove everything. I'm cutting myself. Boy sword and girl sword have a little over 18 inch, 18 and a quarter inch blades. Right? But, so they are true demi swords. The boy sword here, or man sword, I should say, has a blade of 24 inches, putting it clearly in what I classify as a short sword. Hmm. So let's compare those two in length. Yeah. Oop. Mm hmm. There you go. A little bit different. Now, the ironic thing is, in the hand, boy sword here, actually, when you swing it out, has more pull to it than man sword. In other words, this blade has more torque on the swing than this because it's thicker and heavier despite being shorter. Very deceptive. But, as a pair, and a short together, all right. Interesting little problem there. So, where to put that scabbard here is. So there you go. I think that's pretty much all my Frankenswords. No. Surprise, surprise, surprise. We have done all the Frankenswords. And now we can move on to other things, like making my new intro for the new year and um, my 200th video is coming up. Yeah. I don't know what I'll do for that. Anyway, Nelson, and good night, folks.